Hello everybody and welcome to this biology video on the human body's secondary specific immune response. So this is what happens when a pathogen breaches your primary defences, things like your skin, uh, tear fluid, mucus, earwax, all those things, once it gets inside your body, either into your cells, this is on the left, the cell mediated response, or on the right we have the humoral response, that's in reference to if a pathogen enters your bloodstream or the lymph system, any of the body's humours, fluids as it were. Now before we go any further I'd advise that you read over or watch my video on antigens and antibodies because they are quite important in this whole process. So. Firstly, we're going to start on the right hand side of the, of the page. By the way, I've used images to display this because it's quite handy when I'm explaining it. I will put up a word version explaining it step by step by step at the end of the video so you can pause and take a picture of it or go over it or whatever you wish to do. So firstly, we're looking at the right hand side of the page. We're looking at the secondary specific immune response in the body's humors, the humoral response. So I'm going to assume that this pathogen, this purple thing in the middle of middle top of the page has managed to get into your bloodstream. OK, and in your bloodstream, it encounters a phagocyte. So the phagocyte recognizes that it's a pathogen, it's a bacteria, it's a bad guy, and it comes along and it engulfs it. And as it engulfs it, it will release chemicals called monokines. And what these do are, these attract more phagocytes to the scene where this pathogen was found, because there's probably going to be more around, by the process of chemotaxis. And chemotaxis is just when cells are attracted to a certain area because there is that particular chemical there. So this phagocyte, it begins to engulf our pathogen and it releases monokines, which attracts more phagocytes to clear up any other um, pathogens around. But this phagocyte is even more clever than attracting more of its own friends. What it does is, as it engulfs and digests and ingests and breaks down this pathogen using its lysosomes and its enzymes, it does not break down the pathogen's antigens. In fact, what it does is it takes those antigens and dis uh, displays them, it presents them, puts them on its cell surface membrane. And that's what the next arrow down is. We have our phagocyte with the antigens of the pathogen on its cell surface membrane. And this cell then becomes known as an antigen presenting cell. It's taken the antigens, presenting them on its cell surface membrane. Nice and simple. Next, what happens is purely by chance. I've made it kind of seem through the drawings and the writings that this happens by a process, but this is purely by a chance collision. What will happen is a T lymphocyte will come along and T lymphocytes have specific antibodies on their cell surface membrane. Remember those antibodies will have the complementary shape to the antigen. So we're going to have loads of T lymphocytes with loads of different antibodies on their cell surface membranes floating around in the blood. And just by chance, the one with the complementary antibody to the antigens being presented by the phagocyte will collide with one of these antigens and it will bind to it. So now we've got this T lymphocyte with the specific complementary antibody to the antigen on that phagocyte binding to it. And this activates, as it were, that T lymphocyte. And when it activates it, this process is known as clonal selection. So we've selected, we've chosen the correct T lymphocyte. And this T lymphocyte will then divide into three different types of cell. We get uh, T helper lymphocytes, T memory lymphocytes, and T killer lymphocytes. T killer lymphocytes, we come back to later on with the cell mediated response. At the moment, just look at T memory and T helper lymphocytes. So firstly, the T memory cells. So our T, our T cell will divide into T memory cell and T memory cells will then replicate, replicate, replicate by mitosis. That means you've got loads of T memory cells floating around. And these T memory cells, just like the T cell, they have the complementary antibody to the antigen, and they go off and they float around in the blood waiting for next time. So that T lymphocyte, that original one that binded to the antigen, was originally a T memory cell from last time. So they're used in the next secondary specific immune response. But in the short term, in the present, it's the T helper cells that we specifically look, specifically look at. So the T, T helper cells, they will divide from the original T cell and they will then replicate, replicate, replicate by mitosis. By the way, this process where they replicate is known as clonal expansion. 
And these T helper cells, all of them, they produce loads and loads and loads of chemicals called interleukins. And these interleukins, a bit like with the monokines earlier on, they attract uh, B lymphocytes with the specific complementary antibody to the antigen presenting cell, to that phagocyte, which is still there presenting those antigens. So T helper cells release interleukins, attract by the process of chemotaxis, again, chem cells moving towards chemicals that they like, um, those B cells with the complementary antibody. And here, that B cell with its complementary antibody will bind to one of the antigens being presented by the antigen presenting phagocyte. And this activates this B lymphocyte, this B cell. And this again is clonal selection. We've chosen the right B cell. And this B cell will then split into two different types of cells. And again, they will replicate and replicate and replicate by mitosis, clonal expansion. The two types of cell we get are B memory cells. They're a bit like T memory cells. B memory cells, they have the complementary antibody and they will float around in the blood waiting to be activated next time this pathogen comes along. But plasma cells, this P cell here, is the most important one. This P cell, it replicates, we've got loads of P cells. They pump out millions and millions and millions of antibodies, just the antibody, no more cells, just the antibody, into the blood. And those antibodies then neutralize and agglutinate the pathogen, therefore disabling it, therefore meaning you have quelled the threat. You have got rid of the pathogen and destroyed um, it, meaning that it can't do any more harm to you. So that was the specific immune response if your body's humours are invaded by pathogens, so in the blood, in the lymph system. However, what happens if a pathogen does enter one of your cells and begin to replicate inside that cell? Well, now we're going to look at the left-hand side of the page with the cell-mediated specific immune response. So let's assume that the pathogen has invaded a body cell and began to replicate inside it. Now that body cell does have its own defenses. They're not as sophisticated as, say, the phagocytes' defenses, so they won't, they won't have specific lysosomes with lysines in to break down all of the pathogen but they will have lysosomes and enzymes with the ability to break down some or most of, at least one of the pathogens. Now, when they do so, they replicate what the phagocyte does. They will take the antigens from that uh, phagocyte after breaking it down and present them on its cell surface membrane. So we've now moved down. So now we have an infected body cell which has broken down a phagocyte and presented its antigens on its cell surface membrane. Now what happens is quite clever, because in the humoral response, we had T lymphocytes activated, who, which replicated into the three different types of T cells, one of them being T killer cells. Now T killer cells, they leave the bloodstream, they will leave the lymph system, and they will enter your into tissue fluid, so uh, tissue fluid essentially, um, and they will be moving between your body cells. And they have the specific complementary antibody to the antigen on their cell surface membrane. So if this T killer cell, whilst searching, whilst moving between cells, comes into contact with this invaded cell, which is presenting the antigens, it will recognize that this is a body cell presenting those antigens. Its antibodies will then bind to those antigens, and this activates the T killer cells process. This is now moving right down to the bottom. So the T killer cell, what it then does is it will release enzymes into that infected body cell. Loads and loads and loads, millions of enzymes. And those enzymes will break down all parts of the body cell and all parts of the pathogens inside those body cells. So therefore, this cell has essentially, by presenting those antigens to ensure T killer cells will find it, it is committing suicide, essentially. It's asking for itself to be broken down and destroyed because it knows it's already been infected and is being used to replicate pathogens. So those T killer cells, antibodies bind to the antigens being presented by that infected body cell. They'll release enzymes into it, breaks down the pathogens and the body cell. And those T killer cells then move on and there might be some debris left over. That's the cell mediated response. That's very short and to the point. But that is assuming that previously T cells have been activated in the humoral response so that the specific complementary shaped antibodies of T killer cells are floating around.